Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to be working on a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to paint nebula paintings. Um, I know that there are many, many different types of nebula. You can just kind of scroll through uh, countless images online of all the various kinds. Um, I tend to love the ones that are colorful and um, multifaceted, kind of have these cloudy looks to them. So um, I'll show you how I go through the process of selecting what I'd like to paint and how to translate these amazing um, space, uh, I guess, telescope, satellite, I don't know, um, those types of images into a watercolor painting. So my first step when painting a nebula painting is to go through inspiration photographs because I don't know what these things look like in space. So I have to rely on other people's visions of, um, of these, um, and these photographs. So, um, using, I mean, I, I here I Googled Omega Nebula and there are multiple images that can be used to inspire you and to kind of direct you. Um, generally speaking, I try to choose an image, a one that um, is, is translatable into a watercolor, but also one, for example, this one, this image is put out by NASA. So I know who I can attribute um, the, the source photograph. So I already have that one saved here in my photos so I can refer back to it. Um, now I have my piece of paper here that I'll be painting on and it is a five by seven, which is a, uh, I tend to work primarily in standard sizes. So if they're framed, it's easier to frame and it's not going to translate exactly, but I'm also just using the photograph as inspiration. My watercolor painting is not going to turn out looking exactly like um, like this photograph, but this gives me an idea of the colors, the depth of the shadows, and where the light's coming from. So it's a very good resource. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my paper down. I use blue painter's tape. Um, it is as gentle as washi tape, but it is much stronger and honestly, for um, for galaxy paintings and for nebula paintings, because you're going to be working so many layers, um, that is a lot of water. You definitely want to tape your paper down, unless you're working with a block. So for the first layer, and nebula paintings have multiple layers, um, for the first layer I'm just going to put down the colors um, like vaguely to give myself, it's almost like blocking out this piece of paper. The colors that I am going to be working with, if you look here, this particular nebula, if you recall the photograph, is going to be primarily um, this ice queen kind of um, a sea foam type of color and there are some yellows and oranges in it as well as well as um, a little bit of uh, purple shades and stuff so I'll be choosing my colors accordingly but for the back the first layer the color is fairly light and I've spoken about this before you can either wet your paper and do wet on wet but I work with a brush this is the silver black limited uh, silver limited black velvet brush and it holds an incredible amount of water it's not always necessary to put down a layer of water first you can, it's, it's, it's up to you. So this part of 
the galaxy or the nebula is this light kind of sea green color. And then the bottom part of it is an orange to yellow color. So I'm really just kind of blocking out um, the general colors. And here I'm using a size 10 brush because um, I'm not doing any kind of detail work. And this brush is nice and big and can give me some great blends. So that's my first layer done. I'm gonna wait for this layer to dry completely. Generally speaking, when I do my nebula paintings, I take days and days to work on it and I let it air dry um, only because um, it's because I know it's gonna be a time consuming process. And each time you put heat on the tape, it loosens the adhesive. So if you're doing five, six, seven layers, and drying between each layer. The tape doesn't like it very much. So we're gonna let this dry and come back to it. We're back and ready for layer two. So for layer two, I'm gonna do really kind of the same thing I did for layer one. But I'm gonna pay a little bit more attention to where colors are a bit more saturated. And where my light is coming from. And again, I'm working with the big brush to get um, smooth gradients of color. Okay, that's my second layer of color and I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so, so far for my first two layers, I've only used three colors. Um, if you're using Aloha watercolors, I've used Ice Queen, Plumeria, and Alani for these three um, colors, but now I'm going to continue doing um, soft, gentle layers on top, but I'm probably, I'm going to mix in some other colors um, along with those. So I'm going to start here in this corner. It doesn't matter. You could start up here as well, but I'm going to start down here. And this is a little bit more Alani, which is a nice um, orange color. And now I'm, let me see, I gotta read the names of my colors. I am mixing in a bit of Waimea here. Now I know just from um, practice over the years that I'm working rather quickly. So I'm not paying too much attention to my water lines because I know that I I know my own rate of painting but that might be something that you may need to be mindful of just kind of watch because you don't want water lines at this point you don't want any lines in your in your work so this next color that I am putting in is actually brown rice. A little bit lighter color. And then a bit more Waimea up here. And I'm going to smooth that out with the 
the layer of plumeria underneath it. All right, now if you remember the reference photo, there's a lot of light greens, um, kind of a sea foam type of color, which I used Ice Queen for back here. But there's also um, kind of like a cloudy formation here in the center. So now as I work on that back here, I'm gonna pay attention to um, kind of the shape of that formation. So my light source is up here and that's where I want it to be the lightest. And then I have this kind of purple, a very dark purple and brown formation here. So I'm really just kind of laying that color on to give myself an idea. I'm not paying any attention quite yet um, to the details. So the purple I just used is Lily Koi. And now this is a bit of Waimea for the brown. And a little bit more Lily Koi over here. Okay, so that is my third layer of color. We're gonna let that dry and come back to it. So I think we've officially entered into what I like to call the ugly phase of galaxy painting. Um, and we will remain in this phase for quite some time. Um, it's just the nature of galaxy paintings because you just you need so many layers and for so long it just um continues to look like this mess of colors all right so i'm still using my large brush because i'm not putting in any details quite yet but i am adding some more kind of depth to it just doing the general outline, saturating certain colors in areas that I know it's gonna be darker. And these don't even have to be the exact colors that you want at the end. It's really just to give you an idea. You'll find that because you put on so many layers of color that the um, the first few layers, the first several layers are far from perfect. Now I'm adding a little bit of flame red here. As well as a tiny bit of Alani. This is beach that I'm adding, the color beach. And <clears throat> this layer of things can really just still be blended together. So we're not quite at the point of adding 
details. Okay, now moving on to this top portion. We're still working with um, Ice Queen. A lot of Ice Queen. We have a light filled area here. A bit of purple. Some orange. A little more purple or lily koi over here. All blending into some light, some yellow along here. Um, I smooth that out by adding some brown rice and blending it all in together. some darker tones over there. We do want a little bit more dark over on this side. And finally, I'm getting some jade vine and adding some just to a few areas over here. All right, so I think this is layer four now that we're on. Um, we're gonna give this some time to dry and return to our painting. All right, we are back and this is now layer five of our, um, of my nebula. And this might be the last layer where I use the large brush, um, which is great for blending, I think the next layer we might be ready for a smaller brush to start adding to really start saturating the colors and um, begin adding detail to our layers so for this layer i'm still just thinking about the general placement of colors So I guess I will review the colors that I'm using again. I did some um, flame tree over here with a little bit of Alani on top of that. The color I'm putting down right now is Waimea. Smooth that out a bit here. Then I'm gonna add just a little bit of Alani here. I'm just paying attention to what colors I put down underneath it. I want some red highlights. So put down some red here. This is flame tree again. 
and then kind of blend those colors together. Adding some more Waimea here. Blend that out with a bit of brown rice. And then move up to my more yellow, my brighter colors up here. my darker colors. And then I'm gonna move back up to the top with Ice Queen. Add a bit of depth to this area with Jade Vine. I'm going to do the same to this little area up here, but I'll blend it in with the original color, which is Ice Queen. You want to keep this area here light and add some lily koi here, a bit of plumeria along with Alani. Some more lily koi. Blend with brown rice. I love the color brown rice because it's such a a great um, neutral blending color. I think I have a bit much here. So I'm actually going to pick up some of that pigment, remove it, blend that in. We have another light area here. So I'm going to pick up some of the paint. To pick up paint that's wet, all I do is rinse off my brush dab it on the towel to get as much water off of it as possible. So this is a relatively dry, it's dry and clean. And you can tap onto wet paint and pick up the pigment. <clears throat> okay. So this is layer five. And we'll wait for it to dry. So now we're moving on to level, to level six, to layer six. Um, and I moved to a smaller, this is a size six brush. It still holds a lot of water. So I do still have to pay attention to how much water is on my paper. But the six size six brush will give me a little bit more, um, ability to put in details and to blend smaller areas of color. So this time I'm working from the top down. It doesn't really matter. Um, it started with the bottom and then as I was working, 
I realized that it makes much more sense to start from the top down and go down towards the bottom right. So right here, I'm, I am paying a little bit more attention to my reference photo because there's so many variations of color that are all blended in so seamlessly in the photograph that I'm using. I've decided in this area I'm adding a slightly different shade of purple. And that one is um, Poi. Now I am going to need a little bit of a darker color. So I'm adding some lava rit here to darken up this bit of purple that I've got over here. I'm adding a bit of Kohola right here for this dark area. Kohola is a very, very dark blue and it'll blend really nicely with the purple, the Lily Koi, just to darken that area up a bit, the same right here and over here. <clears throat> so I need some slightly darker areas. I'm gonna smooth that out a bit. All right, so now I'm moving to this lower part um, here, and there is quite a bit of a light reflected onto these cloudy formations here. So this is really just to show you of where, you know, generally speaking, where the light is hitting. I'm using Pakalana here. Most of these, uh, which is, it's a very creamy, um, pale, pale yellow. And most of this color is going to blend right into the other colors that I put down here. And that's fine. So I'm going to use 
a bit of plumeria to start my coloring in basically. That was my original base yellow. And then I'm going to start darkening areas of it. And I am using um, beach for that right now. you can see that most of the highlight color that I put down, the Pakalana, has just blended right in. to a slightly darker color. It's only slightly darker than beach, which is, um, I'm using brown rice. I'm gonna add it to just a few areas. And now an even darker color. I'm using Lava Rit to really kind of develop those dark, dark, dark clouds. Are they even clouds? I think they're just like dust. I don't know. Space dust. I am going to need to go even darker than that in a bit, but with the darker colors, well, with any color really, I, I like to go lighter and then gradually just build up to the darker. It's easier to add color than it is to take it away. Alright, that is layer six. 
So I'm now on layer seven of the painting. It's, in my opinion, still rather um, deeply in the, uh, the ugly phase. I still, you know, you look at it and I feel that it does not look quite like a, uh, a nebula painting just yet, but you'll see the magic happen soon enough, I think. So, um, in the previous layer, I had added a small amount of jade vine to add a little bit of um, variation in the color and some more depth to um, the kind of turquoise sea foamy part of the painting here. And now I'm adding a little bit of night dive, which is an even darker green shade. So just some hints of it in various places. Because I think that that is one of the most challenging parts of um, the nebula paintings is you look, if you look very closely at the photographs, um, the the variations in color there's just so many variations um and you want as much as possible to reflect that in your um in your painting so this is officially what I would call a detail layer where I'm adding um, and creating shadows and variations of color. Now the darker areas, I am actually going to darken even more, but I'm choosing not to go with black and working with various shades of brown. So this darker brown that I'm putting down now is um, Kaleo. And part of the reason for that is, um, in my opinion, um, browns tend, I, they, they blend very well with purple. And we have quite a bit of purple right here. And it darkens the shade of purple without losing that purple pigmentation, that shade of purple that you still want to see. Yeah, I have to admit that <clears throat> The image of this uh, Omega Nebula they chose is not the easiest one. So there are certainly less complicated ones that you could start with. Ones with perhaps not quite so many um, 
different shades in it. Oh, I should add that the the white that I just added is um, <clears throat> Milky Way from Aloha Colors. I'm just adding little hints of it here and there. And I'm choosing to add it now because this area is just the right amount of still wet um, where it won't spread too much, but just enough that you can have the, um, the hints of brightness without it looking unnatural. Okay, so we are now on layer eight. 
and I think this is going to be my final layer. Um, honestly, I probably could go on and on, but um, I think that at the very least, my colors are saturated enough. So for this layer, I'm going to focus on, um, on details. And generally speaking, when I add details, um, I'm primarily using a highlight color to add those details. So this color that I'm using right now is actually not white. It's um, Pakalana. And it is um, almost like a, a pastel yellow. Um, and it can go on pretty opaque, but also um, we watered down to create a more uh, transparent, soft color, which I think is pretty perfect for galaxies. So there are just some areas where I want to add a highlight color. And smooth that out. So at this point, I probably could go on and on um, adding more highlights and making, because it is a very intricate um, nebula. But I think we're gonna go in for the, um, the magic trick here. And that is the addition of stars. So let me just grab what I like to use for stars which is bleed proof white and a toothbrush. So I'm dipping my toothbrush in water and getting the bristles nice and wet. So right now my bristles are dripping wet. I don't wanna bring, they're dripping wet. So I'm tapping it on my towel to make them damp but not dripping. And I'm gonna dip it right into my bleed proof white. And then I'm gonna make sure I don't have too much on the tip. So um, the brush is the tip of it. I'm only using the top part of the, the toothbrush. It's pretty saturated. 
and then I just take that toothbrush and flick my stars onto it. Now the next step is to create some um, glowing stars, star bursts. So I'm taking a clean Q-tip. I just dipped it lightly into my water and I'm gonna squeeze the excess water out so that the tip is damp, but not wet. I'm gonna gently dab it into some of my bleed proof white and I'm gonna test it here on the edge of my blue tape first because I don't want it to be a big white blob. I just want it to help me diffuse the light. I'm gonna use a small brush this is a size two. You could go even smaller. Um, get a little bit of paint here on the tip to brighten the center of my stars. And now I'm gonna give a bit of a star beam, star burst to a few of these stars. Now my brush is fairly dry and that helps me not have like globs of paint on my paper. Since so I want these light beams to be as light as possible. All right. And I think we're done here. The final step is, of course, to remove the tape. And this is always so satisfying. When you're pulling your tape, always pull the tape away from your painting so that if the paper does catch and rip, that it pulls the paper away from your painting. So here is my finished piece. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.